Hello, thank you for taking my call. Yes. Um, my question mm -hmm. is just in uh and I'll go into detail what I necessarily mean by it, but um just the meaning of the days in Genesis. Oh, yes. And kind of what I'm looking at on this is, is there really deeper meaning? Um, the thing that yeah. fascinates me with Genesis is how accurate it honestly is with how evolution says that things should have transpired. And um, yeah. just looking at examples of this, day three is, you know, the, uh, oh, well, day, first of all, is the um, day one, let there be light. Um, day two, the separation of the water. And, I mean, there's evidence that there would have been water on the earth from very, very early time, um, the next thing would have been the separation of land and water, and then plants would have emerged, which is exactly how it should have happened. Um, then the next day four is very fascinating, and it says, let there be the lights in the dome, which with the plants producing the oxygen would have cleared up the atmosphere and so on and so forth with that. Um, so the first question I really have is, again, essentially the meaning of the days. It's what, is there essentially the meaning of the days. Right. Um, and God right. is really somewhat outside of time and in the eternal now. Does time really apply to him? Right. Okay. Um, well, let's let's uh, slow down here. I think what you want to do is check out the Catechism of the Catholic Church, paragraph three thirty seven, uh, and the, catech the Catechism actually talks about this that the days are actually symbolic. Now, it, you know, you will find fathers of the Church on both sides uh, of this argument. There, there were some, certainly, in the early Church that, that uh, held to a more literalistic view. In our modern Catholic theology, it's generally understood, as the Catechism says, in paragraph 337, and I'll, I'll quote it here, "...God himself created the visible world in all its richness, diversity, and order." Scripture presents the work of the Creator symbolically as a succession of six days of divine work concluded by the rest of the seventh day. All right, uh, and on the subject of creation, the sacred text teaches the truths revealed by God for our salvation, permitting us to recognize the inner nature, the value, and the ordering of the whole creation to the praise of God. So the, the focus here is not so much on a literal 24 our period of time. In fact, both Origen, for example, in the 3rd century, St. Augustine in the 4th, early 5th centuries, talk about this. St. Augustine says it's obvious that the, the, the days are not meant to be literal, because you don't have the sun and moon created till the fourth day, and you need a sun in order to have a 24-hour period of time. So there is a deeper meaning, to be sure. So we don't look at this so much as a science textbook that shows us how you know, God created like, like a science book would. But there are crucial truths. We, we believe Genesis is, is historical. It's a historical document, but it relates things using, especially the first 11 chapters. That's what we're focusing on here, because once you get to chapter 12 and the introduction of Abraham, then you move to a, a more strictly historical narrative than you do in the first... The first 11 chapters of Genesis are a particular genre, so again here, they're symbolic, and it's very important to understand the essential teachings. I, I'll tell you what, I would recommend highly a book by Cardinal Ratzinger that I think just nails this to the wall. It's, it's called In the Beginning. It is absolutely outstanding. He, he goes into great detail as to... And I'll, I'll just give you a thumbnail here. See, but, but I, I think the problem is we get in arguments about 24-hour periods of time and talking snakes, and we miss the, the deeper truths that are being revealed here. Cardinal Ratzinger's thesis is, if, if you understand the Torah to be finally redacted roughly in the 6th century B.C., it took uh, the Torah a, a good thousand years to be completely written and, and redacted. It's being completed at a time when the Israelites were surrounded. They had been taken into captivity by the Babylonians. They were surrounded on all sides, and it's really a response, especially the Torah here. It's a response against the popular myths of the day. You know, the Babylonian myths that saw the god or, god or gods, Marduk, the, the sun god, for example, who, who gets in a fight with the dragon, cuts him in half, and part of the blood 
uh, you know, what is it? No, his, I think his head becomes the heavens, and then his blood uh, becomes you and I. I mean, that, that's the, the, the popular myth that was out there at the time. God is part of the creation, right? So when, when the inspired authors are writing this text, they're responding to that. They're showing how, you know, absolutely the opposite of the myth, where, you know, we're the result of, of evil and chaos, you know, a, a fight where the dragon gets his head cut off, that's where you and I come from. It's chaos, and it's evil, and it's violence. Whereas if you look at, at Genesis, Cardinal Ratzinger points out, no, God transcends nature, creates nature absolutely good, not in chaos, not as a result of evil and so forth. So, you know, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth was a radif- radical departure from the popular myths of, of the day. Anyway, that's just a little thumbnail sketch there, Adam. Check out the book in the beginning. It is absolutely outstanding. It gives you a really uh, a good Catholic perspective on, on those early chapters of Genesis.